put a little piece of tape right here. Boom, all right. Today, I'm miking my drum set with more than two microphones for the very, very first time. Let's do this. Hey everybody, it's Pat and welcome back to another video. If you're new around here, I make all kinds of videos around creating music, such as tips, tricks, tutorials, product reviews, and experimentation, I guess. This is what today's video falls into. And uh, well, if you're into that kind of stuff, you can click the subscribe button. Once you've done that, you should click the bell to get notified every single time I upload. All right, so if you've been a subscriber of this channel for a little while, or you've seen a couple of my uh, other videos, my drum videos, I tend to uh, mic my drum set with only two microphones. That is because until very recently, all I had was a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. You've also seen me mic my drum set with only one microphone, but that's pretty much only what I was testing, uh, the Q9, the Tonor Q9, and the Tonor uh, CT2040. But basically, I I've always wanted to record uh, drums with more than one or two mics. But in order to do that, you obviously need a sound card that has more than two inputs. Makes sense. All this to say that I recently bought one of those. This is a Focusrite Scarlett 18i20, so it's got 18 inputs. We're gonna test it out today. Before we do so, let me reiterate that I've never done this before. You're gonna see a lot of mistakes, you're gonna see a lot of positioning errors and all that stuff. Let me know in the comments what you would do better, what you would do differently. Maybe, you know, in 10 years I'll look back at this and go, wow, that was a great sound, or it was a fucking terrible sound, but you're on this journey with me, so I'm gonna try and do my best, and together we'll find out if it's a good sound or not. All right. Let's get going. In terms of equipment, I will obviously be using my Scarlett 18i20. I'll be using some of the mic stands I have lying around here in the jam space, some of the cables I have too. And in terms of microphones, I will do my best to match sort of the standard microphones you would normally use on a drum set. Here are the microphones I'm actually going to use. I actually don't own an SM57, but I have quite a few SM58s. So that's what I'm gonna be using on the snare top, on the tom, and on the floor tom as well. I love having the option to control kind of that snap and bump buzz that you get from a snare sound, so I'm gonna put a snare bottom microphone. For that, I'm gonna use a Sennheiser E609 Silver. I know that's usually made for uh, live guitars, but you know, I have one lying around. I'm gonna experiment a little bit, put that under uh, my snare, see how that sounds. I don't actually own a bass drum microphone, but my friend and fellow jam space mate, my fellow roommate here, has an Apex 125, part of a little kit that he has, so we're gonna be using that on bass drum. On overheads, I'll be using a Rode NT1A and a Samson C01. Now, I know those aren't matching, maybe I should use only one overhead, but we're experimenting here. Let's see what happens if I use those two as overheads. Filling the last available spot on my sound card will be my trusty Perception 420. All right, first things first, we are going to mic this bass drum. Come on down. Hey, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I actually hate bass drum holes. This thing, it's got no use for me. You know what? If John Bonham didn't have one, then I don't need one. That's why I'm not gonna put this microphone inside and get that little annoying clicky sound. I'm actually gonna put this guy right up to the drum skin right here and call it a day. All right, now that that controversial topic is out of the way, I'm going to mic my snare drum. Look at that, I took the windscreen off. It's basically a 57 now. Mic positioning for the snare and really for the whole drum kit is really, really important. And I'm not gonna pretend like I know what I'm talking about. This is not a drum micing tutorial or anything like that. This is just a guy documenting trying to apply tutorials he's seen online. But a thing I know is that your snare microphone wants to point away from cymbals or from other instruments, especially the hi-hat. So I'm gonna put my snare microphone right here. Can you see that? Yeah, right there. Basically, the null of the microphone, the back of the microphone that doesn't catch any sound is pointing at those cymbals. That way, the microphone is pointing at the snare, not exactly at the center, not at the edge either, somewhere in between, and uh, it's not gonna catch as much cymbal leakage. If I had it pointing this way, for example, I would probably catch a whole lot of hi-hat way too much, and it probably would be a problem at mixing at this point. So I think this is a good position. It's not in the way or anything like that when I'm playing. Let's now mic the bottom of the snare drum. Okay, what a weird angle. Anyway, so for the bottom of the snare, I'm using a Sennheiser E609 Silver, which like I said before, is usually a mic that you'd use for live guitars, but I have one on hand and it's just the snare bottom. Who cares? All right, so I've got the microphone fairly close to the snares or you know, the little chain things. What are they called, strainers? That thing. And uh, I've got the microphone at about the same distance from the bottom of the skin as the 58 is from the top skin. That's probably gonna prevent phasing issues. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna deal with all that yet. We'll see, but that's what this video is for. You're watching a guy make so many mistakes. 
let's keep going. All right, so our toms are gonna be pretty straightforward. I'm again gonna use a couple 58s without the windscreen. I'm just gonna put the tom mic right here, just like that. And uh, I'm gonna try and follow the same principle where I'm putting the null of the microphone away from the cymbals. But as you can see, I've got quite a couple cymbals on this side. So I'm gonna put it right here. You see that? All right, on to overheads. Okay, this is where things really start getting sketchy. This works for now. I'll put the second one up and then I'll do the string thing, which I've never done before. I'll do the room mic and then we've mic'd the drum set. Put this guy around here, looking like that, I think. Instead of putting the microphone right here, I'm actually going to rotate it so that it's pointing both walls. This means that the sound sort of has to bounce off the walls to then uh, be picked up by the microphone. You know, I was gonna put this a little bit higher, but I want more like bass drum and thump, I guess, in this room mic. So I put it a bit lower. It's like at about snare level at this point. All right, I've got everything hooked up and now I'm going to try and position my overheads so that I don't have phase issues. And if I remember correctly, you take a piece of string and you tape it to the middle of your bass drum and then you hold it at the middle of the snare. Then you take that string, you measure your first overhead, and then you basically rotate it on your thumb just like that and go to the other position. I don't have a piece of string, but I have a, a beautiful Native Union USB-C cable. I like that position, it's fine. It's gonna catch a bit of everything right here. So I should probably put my other overhead right here. Boom, see, uh, it's good enough for this test. All right, this is gonna be pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna play instrument by instrument, set the levels and make sure I have enough headroom that nothing is distorting or clipping. There you have it. That's my first ever try at miking a drum set with so many mics. It's a great learning experience for me. Again, if you have comments or uh, suggestions as to what I can do differently to improve my sound, let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like on your way out. It really helps me out. You can also subscribe if you haven't done that already. That also helps. There's suggestions that are popping up right here. Me on the drums and recording tips. Giving me watch time is something that really, really helps my channel out. So I wanna thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.